morning, everyone. My name is Mary Kate Ross. I'm a senior special education major, and I'm graduating in May. And I did an independent study with Dr. Richard on social networking and blogging and taking the conversation beyond the classroom. So the purpose of this study was to incorporate the use of technology through the NAME, which is a social networking tool, to get students talking about young adult literature beyond the walls of the classroom. Um, James Paul Gee is a research researcher who studies new literacies. Um, his most current research involves video games and language and learning. Um, in the article that he wrote, Identity as an Anal Analytical Lens for Research and Education, Gee, looks Gee takes a closer look at identities beyond race, class, and gender. And based upon this literature, he created an approach to identity that takes a closer look at these conversations and imposes a link to the new literacies. So Guy defines identity as when any human being acts and interacts in a given context, others recognize that person as acting and interacting as a certain kind of person or even as several kinds at once. So for example, that could be a feminist, a kindergarten teacher, or what some people might call an at-risk student. And these identities can change within different contexts. Um, so Guy looks at four identity perspectives and he interlocks them. Um, their nature identity, institutional identity, discourse identity, and an affinity identity. Take a closer look at them. Nature identity is who you are when you walk into a classroom or into a room. Um, for the purposes of this study, it was 15 young adults, 9 males, and 6 females. Institutional identity and that's the higher power that assigns um, this identity to you. And again, for the purposes of this study, it was freshmen in an honors English class. Discourse identity is how you describe yourself or how others describe you. And again, for the purposes of this study, it was for conversations that were going on in the name. Um, and affinity identity is groups that you choose to belong to. Um, Dr. Richard created this name network um, and students used it as an online book club. So Guy's, um, the, Guy's identity terms can be used as a way to study theory and practice within education, and that was, again, through the use of the NANG technology. So now you might be asking, what is the NANG? Um, the NANG runs in a similar fashion to that of Facebook. Um, it allows you to post a blog where people can comment on your blog posts. Um, and you create a social network for only a certain amount of people, so you need to be invited within this network. So it's very safe. Um, and here's a shot of what the name looks like. If you look, there's the student posted about the book that they were reading, um, and on the bottom you can leave comments. And all blogs must be approved by the person who started the name. So the participants of this study um, included eight undergraduate students enrolled in the course Young Adult Literature, along with 15 high school freshmen enrolled in an honors English class at South Windsor High School. Um, the undergraduate students were assigned to read a young adult novel each week, um, and they would then go onto their name page and post on whatever they wish. Um, the high school freshmen were assigned to either, read either one of two novels, which was The Hunger Games by Suzanne Collins and The Absolutely True Diet of Your Part-Time Indian by Sherman Alexi. Um, I did a literature review where I looked at several um, studies and case studies that supported our topic of social networking in the classroom, um, along with other studies on the incorporation of technology within the academic setting. Um, so basically what I found was that this technology strengthens in and out of school literacies where the students have a virtual space to express themselves. Um, the students use technology because it, it interests them and, it forms, um, and where they form a focus on their peers as their audience rather than the teacher. And students ask questions which the questions lead to discussions and the discussions involve clarifying information and synthesizing and analyzing that information in the novels they are reading. Here the students learn how to appropriately, appropriately use these social networking websites. So after looking at the data from the NANG and looking at the um, research from the literature review, um, there were some findings. The students summarized what they read and asked in-depth questions about the books that they were reading, proving that they were in fact critically thinking about what they were reading. The questions that stemmed from this critical thinking then went beyond and the teacher took these questions and used them as talking points within the classroom. Here's what one student posted on The Hunger Games. They said, through the book, there were definitely some underlying meanings that I don't know if people picked up on. Like if someone does something nice for you, you do something back. Which was PETA giving Katniss the bread earlier in the book. So Katniss feels guilty because of the marks on his face. 
thinking that those were her fault. So during the Hunger Games, Katniss really does try to keep him alive, even before the rule where two tributes can win. So the students summarized the in this information from the novel, but then they went on to pose some questions. I just want to know if you think it's worth it to save someone who in the end might be the one to kill you. Was it really worth it for Katniss to save PETA? They had both already saved each other. Wouldn't that make them even? So again, the students summarized this information, and then they posed some awesome questions um, where students actually went and commented and left some remarks. Um, students were having these online discussions where they clarified questions they had about the book they were reading. The discussions demonstrated the strong community of learners that was developed, where students took risk, risks and asked, and asked some really critical questions. Um, and this is what one um, student posted about the absolutely true diet of part-time Indian. They said, this section of the book left me really surprised and yet laughing. In the, in the very beginning of the book, it starts off with a bang. When the dad has to put the dog down by shooting him with the gun, it was very sad, but I still wanted to read more and more. Another thing that I didn't really understand is why he would want to leave the reservation to go to a rich white school that he has to walk 22 miles every day, and he probably won't even be accepted by all the other students, meaning he'll be an outcast. One of the things that I found laugh out loud funny is when Rowdy went in and shaved all of the three brothers' eyebrows and ponytail. Please leave comments so I can know how you feel about this section. So after the student um, posted this blog, some of his classmates did start that conversation. And they said, I think the main character wants to go to Reardon because he thinks the reservation school is too poor. Like when he got a textbook using his, used by his mom. I agree, I agree with you about the part that Rowdy shaves off those three guys' eyebrows. Another student commented, I agree with you, it was funny. But I think that he skipped from funny to sad, to funny to sad, and then to sad again. It made me emotionally unstable. So the student's original post, again, summarized and analyzed the novel, and then the students posed some awesome questions, which sparked the discussion on the emotions that were brought out from reading this book. Um, students were critically analyzing the text. They became active thinkers as they questioned the author's purpose, tried to understand the power relationships in the mo novel, promoted social justice, and recognized these voices that were marginalized, which are voices that aren't heard, um, that were in the story. Critical literacy is a significant skill um, as it encourages the reader to read in a deeper me and more meaningful way, as it allows the reader to move beyond just simply accepting the text as it is and become more active in the reader-author relationship. Here's another shot from the name, and here's what one student posted about the Hunger Games. I knew that Katniss wasn't going to really fight Peta all along, even though she always kept changing her emotions, which was weird. For example, she wanted to kill him, and she didn't care that she actually likes him. Then again, she decides she wants to kill him, but she doesn't want to. I really found Pete and Katniss extremely brave when they stood up to Cato. I kind of guessed that would happen too, but even so, they challenged Cato, and instead of them fighting, Cato sent out mutants. Seriously? I would have liked the ending so much better if they all just battled it out in the games. Good job, Collins. You had an opportunity to make the book really epic, but no, you didn't use it. <laughs> um, so here, the student was engaging in a discussion on why the author wrote the book a certain way. In addition to questioning this author's purpose, the student considered the marginalized voices, which was Cato in the story, um, and the students engaged in this conversation beyond themselves, um, but with the author and the characters. The students were making connections to what they read, and those connections were text to text, text to self, text to world, and text to media. Again, here's another shot from the Nang, and this is what one student posted on the Hunger Games. This book is actually good. I have only read a couple of pages. I like how Katniss is as a character. She is strong and bold and quick to kill. And I think that will be a good skill for her in the Hunger Games, which I still can't believe that she volunteered to take her sister's place. I would love to have a sister like that, wouldn't you? So here the student made a connection back to himself and a wish for his sister like Katniss. He then offered his peers to make some comments where they did. And here's um, another post that a student wrote um, on the Hunger Games. He wrote, I was really drawn into this book almost instantly. I thought it was insane that Katniss was able to shoot squirrels in the eye every time. But I noticed that even the whole idea of having kids battle to death on the TV as some kind of reality show. I think that author just shows us that we as a society are not far from that. I mean, a lot of us are probably thinking, I would never watch people fight to death on TV for my amusement. But then again, who loves watching people fist fight and get drunk? Most of us have seen the Jersey Shore, and a lot of us enjoy it. I believe that the Hunger Games are just Jersey Shore, and that has been escalated to a whole new level. So this student made an awesome connection to text to media. Um, 
through watching the Jersey Shore, which I'm sure most of his peers watch. Um, and students were living vicariously through these offer, the characters' experiences. And this is what one um, student posted on the Absolutely True Diet of Part-Time India. He wrote, when I think about the reservation in our world, they are different. I feel sick. I'm sad and angry about the people that are stuck on the reservation, and I can't get out because they have no job and money. It makes me sick that when they finally get money, they spend it on drinks, just so they can get drunk and forget about life. I wish that I can help all of them get a better life. Some of them don't even try. Junior is one of the only Indians that is trying to give, get a better life for himself by going to a better school. But on the downside, is trying to fit in with people that are not like him. At first he struggles, trying to make friends, but is greeted by racial slurs and bullies. So this is a situation that might have occurred to him, or it might he's seen he might have seen occurring in his high school. So he's, you know, living through the character as they're going through these experiences. Um, some final thoughts. This project was done to see how young adults use language um, on a social networking site, especially in the terms of blogging. Students went beyond just summarizing the book and went as far as giving opinions and questions to consider. Um, this is another shot um, that a student posted about the absolutely true diary of a part-time Indian. Um, the student wrote, finally, students connected with the characters in the book as they took, oh, I'm sorry. The more that I read this book, the more that I get sucked into it. First, I'm happy that Junior now has a girlfriend that sort of loves him. He's the only person that makes her feel good about herself, and she loves that. But I can't help but wonder, will she figure out that he is poor? Next, I'm still mad at Rowdy, and now I'm even more ticked because during the basketball game, Rowdy hurt poor Junior. I realize that he is only doing this because they are opposing teams, but punching someone is crossing the line. What did you guys think about Rowdy hurting Junior during the basketball game? Did he have a good enough reason? So a summary was given of the book again, and questions were posed to the other bloggers, where, once, where the students did analyze and synthesize this information. Um, students were able to find their social identities through the name. This identity was oftentimes validated by their peers. Within this, the classroom environment was enhanced and became so much better. Finally, students connected with the characters in the book as they took a deeper look into the experiences of the characters. They struggled with the disturbing settings of both the Hunger Games and the absolutely true diary of a part-time Indian, and took these feelings to analyze and synthesize with the characters in the story, which demonstrated their abilities to critically analyze these young adult novels. Throughout their time on the name, the students used critical literacy to determine meaning in their own lives, ultimately partaking in this forming the social identity um, in the way that Jim Gee discusses. The discussions on the name allowed the students to take their conversations beyond that 30 minute, three times, or that 50 minute, three times a week class. They took those conversations and they brought them outside of the classroom, which was awesome. Um, and for some future research, this study, um, may be replicated with various levels of English classes at the secondary level to enhance research on the effects of social networking in the classroom and how it serves as a dimension of differ differentiation. Giving students the opportunity um, to further their out-of-school literacies may improve their schools and grade levels who participate in the same. Um, so you could take other schools and have them participate with a different school, so you're having kids really interacting with each other outside of the classroom. Um, and lastly, researchers might use the social net networking tool with younger children. So for example, you can start a blog in a kindergarten classroom to keep that school-home connection open. And it would be kind of cute to have the kindergartners post home to their parents. So, um, so that's all. Does anyone have any questions? <laughs>